Hi, it's me again. And today I'm going to talk about one of the most famous uh, entrance examination in the history of Tokyo University. And the question is very simple. Prove that pi is larger than 3.05. And we, the Japanese students, have been taught that pi is nearly equal to 3.14 and since middle school we've been calculating like area of a circle or you know circumference of a circle with uh, using 3.14 so we are not allowed to use calculators so that's how we've been calculating uh, you know everything that's related to circles but in this question Tokyo University is challenging you with a number that you've been you know, took it for granted for like more than 10 years, but they are asking, do you know like the exact definition of pi or how you derive, you know, number 3.14? And it's a very interesting question. So let's get on with it. So first, we have to understand the definition of pi. And sadly, not many people know the exact definition of pi. So if you draw a circle, there will be a diameter and a circumference, right? So pi is defined as the circumference divided by the diameter. Um, bear with me if the spelling was wrong. But this is the definition of pi. And because every single circle would look exactly the same. So uh, even if you have a diameter of one centimeters, or even if you have a diameter of 500 meters, the ratio of diameter and the circumference would be exactly the same. So pi will be a constant, and that constant number is known to be 3.1415, you know, infinitely continuing. So that's the basic, uh, I mean, that's the definition of pi. And Okay, so now on to the solutions. Okay, this looks a little bit weird. Okay. But how the ancient people, like, you know, ancient Greek people, derived pi without, you know, the supercomputers that we have right now? The strategy those ancient people had uh, we're using is very simple and straightforward. So what they would, what they were doing back then is that they would draw a rough, perhaps like a you know, for example, they they would like draw a rough square that would perfectly fit. The circle, and also they would draw, for example, a hexagon inside inside a circle, inside this circle. So, and what they would do is that they would, you know, measure the perimeter of the square. Let's see. So what they would do is that they would measure the perimeter of this square and then also they would measure the perimeter of this hexagon inside. And because this hexagon's perimeter is a little bit less than the circumference, and then because this square's perimeter is a little bit more than this circle, if they d divide both perimeter with the diameter, they would be able to, you know, like sandwich the pot, like, Pi and they can, you know, roughly speculate uh, the amount of pi. So, perimeter of square divided by the diameter. Let's see, radius so two r. Perimeter of hexagon divided by diameter must sandwich the pi, right? I just drew this example of a square and a hexagon that you can do with like a dodecagon, for example, and that will be more accurate 
speculation because the perimeter of a dodecagon is way closer to the actual circumference, right? So that's how ancient people have been, you know, speculating the amount of pi. And that's what we are doing it today. Okay, so because we want to get as close to the circle, we would uh, let's do with the dodecagon today. Okay, so I just drew a tiny part of this dodecagon that we want to uh, think about. So this is the circle, um, you know, the circumference, and because it's a dodecagon, we divide it with twelve. We divide three hundred sixty degrees plus twelve, so one corner will be a thirty degrees. And if we can derive this length of one side, uh, let's say x, and we multiply that, uh, multiply that by twelve times, uh, and divide that with the diameter, we will be able to get a rough number of pi. And if that is larger than three point oh five, we proved our point, right? And so, okay, so let's. Let's set, uh, first set the goal for this one. Uh, so, so 12x divided by the diameter. So we set radius one this time because you know every circle has the exact same ratio. So who cares? So divided by two uh, must be three point uh, must be larger than three point oh five. So let's do 12x. If 12x is larger than 6.1, we proved our point. So this is the goal. Remember that. So I'm just going to leave that here. 12x, 12x larger than 6.1. So that's the goal. Okay, now we use law of cosine, uh, cosines. So if you don't know what laws uh, of cosines, please Google it. But law of uh, cosines say that x squared equals 1 squared plus 1 squared, 1 squared, 1 squared, 1 squared, minus 2 minus cosine 30 degrees. And in Western education, perhaps you are taught to, you know, just simply input the number uh, and, you know, derive each amount of cosines. But in Japanese education, I don't really have to erase that, but in Japanese education, uh, we would most of the time only use cosine, I mean, we would, in every question, every degree of a corner would be set as often as 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. And then the reason for that is because we can simply, you know, derive that amount by, you know, drawing a triangle. So this is a perfect triangle, every three sides has exactly the same length, so let's say two this time. And if you draw a perpendicular line from one corner to one base, uh, uh, it's 60 degrees on one corner, there's a 30 degrees on one corner, and because you halved this one uh, side, it will be one from here to here, and using the Pythagoras theorem, uh, this uh, this perpendicular line will be a square root of three. So cosine thirty degrees will be two. I mean, square root of three over two. Okay, so this will be square root three uh, divided by two. So just rewrite that. 1 squared plus 1 squared is 2 minus 2 times the square root of 3 over 2, so square root of 3 will be the x squared. And because x is a length, it must be a positive number, right? So x equals square root of 2 minus square root of 3. This is the x. And let's just erase this too. Okay, so there's a square root inside 
the square root. So I think this is one of like SAT math questions, I think. So I think, you, I suppose you know, if you're in I don't know, that kind of level, I, I think you certainly know how to solve this, but what you would do is to try to, try to like, uh, looking at this uh, equation, uh, if you are asked to, you know, uh, remove this square root, you would try to find two numbers that would, if they add them together, it, it will be this one, and if they multiply them together, uh, being this number, and that's what we're trying to find. But because there's no such number for 2 and 3, uh, we would just try to divide that by 2 and make it like this. Right, this is exactly the same. And then now we see that uh, 3 plus 1 is 4, and then 3 times 1 is 3. So, oh, that's a good combination. So, A must be 3 back in that equation, and then B must be 1. And because it's a minus 2, so what this will be is... Um, Plus a minus. I mean, let's just write that in. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but because it's a combination of three and one, if if you take away this bracket, it will be the exact same as here. And because you're square rooting a square, you can just get rid of these, right? And of course, this is redundant. So now we know that x is square root of 3 minus 1 divided by square root of 2. Okay, now to a little bit complicated part. Because Tokyo University entrance examination or most of other Japanese university entrance examination do not allow us to use calculators, we have to calculate, or at least speculate, the amount of square root of 3 and square root of 2. And how we uh, do that is very, very straightforward. Uh, square root of 2 must be larger than 1 and smaller than 2, because if you square everything, so let's just say 2, this would still make sense, right? Other things can be said too, so if, you, if let's say square root of 6 must be smaller than 3 and larger than 2, because if you square everything, This still makes sense. So, and also you can go to a decimal point level because, uh, for instance, um, for instance, uh, one point three squared is one point six nine, right? One point four squared equals one point nine six, and one point five squared will be two point two five. Right. So, uh, two is between one point nine six and two point two five. So, if you square root every single number, So, because it's a square root of a square, you can just get rid of these, right? Now we know more accurate speculation of amounts of square 
root of 2. So square root of 2 must be a little bit more than 1.4 and a little bit less than 1.5. And then we just, you know, narrow this, you know, sandwich strategy. And after doing uh, more of those, we can know that square root of 2 is uh, larger than 1.41 and smaller than 1.42. And the reason we have to go to, you know, the reason we can't, we can't just do 1.4 and 1.5 is that it's too vague and uh, if you continue with that amount, uh, we won't be able to uh, get to the proof. Uh, so we just uh, have to uh, go a little bit more accurate. And as for square root of 3, if you do exactly the same sandwich strategies, we know that it's between 1.73 and 1.74. Right. So because x was square root of 3 minus 1 divided by square root of 2, right? Um, um, this must be between, uh, because square root of 2 is in the denominator, larger the denominator is, I mean larger the denominator is, it will be smaller. The smaller the denominator is, the large, uh, larger the number, right? So on this side we would have a smaller one, 1.41, 1 1.42. 1 uh, 1 um, it's 1.74 minus 1, so 0 0.74 and 0 0.73, right? Still, we are not allowed to use calculators at this point, but because I'm recording a video and I want to be as short as possible, uh, let me divide that with calculators. So 0 0.73 divided by 1.42 is 0.51. I don't know how that, um, it's rough, it, it of course continues a little bit more, but uh, let's just, uh, exactly the same thing here, and 0 0.74 divided by 1.41 is 0.524. Okay, and okay, let's just say it's x, because we wanted to have 12x, right? Let's just multiply these numbers by 12. 6.297 uh, 0.514 times 12 is 6.168 So now, because 12x is be between 6.168 and 6.297 it's very obvious that 12 x is larger than 6.1 and therefore uh, pi is larger than 0. Point, I mean 3.05 so that's it for this video thank you for watching and see you guys next time